I'm Russ. I'm Will. And today we're talking Schmidt about Superman. It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Thanks for checking out Talking Schmidt, where we discuss different ways that marketing technology is portrayed in media. And today we are talking about Superman and Superman's heat vision. Now we know that his heat vision isn't a laser, but they do have a lot of similar qualities. So we're not really going to be looking at uh, whether or not his heat vision is realistic, because we know it really isn't. Uh, but rather we'll be looking at how much like a laser, his heat vision behaves. And we'll probably use some type of you know, made-up scale, you know, one to ten, <laughs> but how uh, similar to a laser they are. Here's the first clip. You know, it's interesting. Usually, his heat vision is red. Yeah, that's true. I usually don't uh, see it yellow. But, uh, so what about that clip? I mean, shoot, they have permanent laser hair removal with oh. lasers. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I guess that kind of answers it. So, maybe I should yeah. bump it up to a 10. <laughs> That's a 10. Uh, I totally I, forgot about that. Yeah, I don't think Superman's ever going to grow a beard if he does it this way that he just did it. He'll never grow a beard again. But, yeah, I mean, I just, <laughs> I just now thought about that. There's laser hair removal that is permanent laser hair removal. So, yeah, this is a 10. Okay. How about Young. that? Young Superman causing trouble. <laughs> he was scared. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of factors come into play with this one, uh, such as what actually is the temperature coming out of his heat vision. What is the heat measurement? I know on some stuff that I looked up on Superman Wiki, um, it says that the temperature of the heat vision or a laser beam is stated to be 5,000 degrees, and they presume that that's Celsius. That's the case, and he's got that big of a laser beam, or of a beam, excuse me there's definitely going to be some hate transferred um, to the other side. But, uh, I mean, if you were using one of our lasers for something like that, I don't think you'd ever be able to generate enough heat to where it would actually transfer over to the other side of the doorknob. At least not that quickly. Not that quickly, yeah. With, with one of our lasers, something like we've got, uh, I'm knocking this one down to, uh, while it could happen, I'm going to bring it down to a three just because I don't think it would, um, you'd have to have a pretty big laser source, I think, in order to generate that much heat to be transferred through a doorknob that quickly. You know, you mentioned the heat or the temperature of Superman's heat vision. And that's one of the differences between his heat vision and lasers. Superman's heat vision has a temperature, whereas lasers have no temperature. Correct. Um, lasers generate heat but they are not in and of itself hot. Whereas, I think it's safe to assume that Superman's heat vision is hot in and of itself. All right, so this next clip is from Smallville. You ever watch Smallville? I have not seen Smallville. I'm so bad at watching stuff. <laughs> you probably got a lot more done in high school than uh, I did. I don't think so. <laughs> Let me preface this by saying that as a dad, I would have loved, I mean, this was, this would have been priceless. Anyway, what do you think about this? This is another interesting one. Um, I think this might be feasible. I know we've done applications with lasers before where it's actually had to pass through, and again, this is getting into the focal distance and where you actually set your focal distance, but where it can pass through some material and actually mark on the backside. We've done some things with um, uh, little glass discs that go mm -hmm. onto a projector. You can't mark the top side of the glass, but you have to get on the bottom side and actually remove some, it, it's some sort of screen printing on the bottom side of the material. So then when you put it on a projector, it shoots this big projection up. Um, so that's what makes me think of, of this application where you can actually pass through the plastic of the bottle. If you have your focal distance set um, within the center of the bottle, perhaps you could get some sort of interaction with the milk. I, I, what would you rate this at on your scale? Uh, I, I'm going to say four. That's what I, I wanted to go safe in the <laughs> middle, too. <laughs> because because I, I'm not sure. I, I mean, it, it definitely wouldn't work that way. No. The way he, but I think it could work. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> to focus the laser through glass or plastic, you know, mm -hmm. something clear. You know, that's definitely possible. But could you do that enough? Or could you do that and heat liquid 
without melting the glass or the plastic. I'm gonna have to go with like a three. And, and maybe, I mean, maybe if we had a different, uh, you know, there, there are multiple different laser sources, uh, you sure. know, uh, fiber laser, CO2 laser, UV. So maybe one of those would actually work better, you know, for this application than, than just the basic fiber laser. Ah, that's a good point. Uh, so here we have Superman performing surgery on Lois Lane and closing up a wound. Carteret, cor, car <laughs> closing that wound with a laser. <laughs> Is that possible? <laughs> yes. Um, lasers are actually becoming very popular in surgery. Um, in a previous position, I did medical sales for uh, sports medicine. So I was in the OR a lot, um, attending live cases, live surgeries. Um, and, and lasers are actually being used in a variety of applications. I think one uh, application, not so much you know, as to close a wound, which, which is possible, but um, with um, LASIK surgery. I think LASIK mm -hmm. is probably something that everybody's familiar with. That's all done with lasers. And, and that technology has been around, shoot, I know my parents, at least my mom got LASIK surgery, yeah. I wanna say 20 years ago, oh, wow. if not more. Um, so, so lasers used in that. Um, a lot of sports medicine use it. Um, uh, it's a little bit different where they actually create a laser, the laser creates a plasma field, and then that little small plasma field, it's a, it's a very microscopic plasma field um, that pulses, same kind of idea where it's generating a laser pulse, and that pulse, each pulse releases a bunch of energy, and then that can remove the material. So uh, when I had my, my uh, ACL done, they actually used, um, what they call a coblation technology, a controlled ablation technology, oh. um, to uh, to remove a lot of the ACL stump before they uh, went in and performed the repair. All right. Well, that's all we have for you today. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any ideas as to what we should watch next, please let us know in the comments, and also subscribe so that you know whenever we update our channel. Thanks again for watching. I'm Russ. I'm Will. And we'll see you next time.